So I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord on a Sunday night. No place like Sunday night in a Pentecost church. Have your holy way tonight, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. It feels exciting. Thank God for what he does. You know, he does more while we're worshiping and praising him than I could do in a lifetime. And so it's always beautiful to see the Lord do his work because when he does his work, it's always done well. Thank God. And so God bless what he is doing. And I'm telling you, there is tremendous opportunity for God to give us tremendous revival. We had three men today, this morning, that was praying. Praise God. Appreciate the man from Brother Galen's job that was here, Jeremy. And then had these two other gentlemen in the altar. And then, you know, we have Samuel that's been coming. And we have um, others that are stirred. We're very excited about what God's doing in Brother Michael's life. Thank God. He's really getting his own touch. Thank God. He's told me that there's been a couple of times when he's praying that he just begins to have words come out of his mouth that he's not even trying to say. They got a code, and that's what they call the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Just enjoy that and get more of it. Praise God. But we're very thankful for what God is doing in him and Sister Joanna's life and each of us where God has brought us from. You know, some of you are where you're at now. Just remember how I used to worship God and how I worship God now and just how much you have just been able to grow in worship. It's a beautiful thing. Praise God. Thank God. So God bless you. I do want to remind the ladies... Um, in case there was a mix-up about the calendar, uh, you know, on the 3rd, the ladies going to be meeting at Sister Cheryl's for breakfast. Then they're going to be going to the Holiday in the Park, not Shangri-La, but they're going to be going to Holiday in the Park in um, West Orange. And then they'll be going to Ford Park. And so it's all going to be a wonderful event. And uh, hopefully you can be a part of that and enjoy that. Um, praise God. All right. Have your Bibles. Let's turn to the Word of the Lord. Hey, God, and hear what the Spirit has to say to the church tonight. Hey, God, Acts chapter... 20 and verse number 24. But none of these things moved me, neither could I count it out my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. I do want to say how much I appreciate the love offering and all the appreciation and you overly appreciate us and overly care for us and we thank you for all of the kindness is everything we have is because of this church, and you have been very blessed, good to us. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 2. Looking unto Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And then Philippians chapter 1 and verse number 6. Being confident of this very thing, that he that had begun a good work in me will perform that until the day of Jesus Christ. Thank God. He that started something in me can finish it. Thank God. I want to preach to you from this thought. God is in the business of finishing. God's in the business of finishing. Thank God. God is the finishing in the finishing business. Praise God. Help us tonight. In the name of Jesus, have your way. God bless you. You can be seated. Thank you for worshiping tonight. I'm telling you, there is power in worship. Thank God. There's strength that comes when you worship. And so don't ever hold back worship because you never know when you can worship yourself into a miracle. You can worship yourself into a victory. Thank God. You can work, worship yourself into the blessings of God. And so worship is always accepted in heaven. Praise God. Thank God. In, in a race, the, the, the finish line is, is what really matters. Thank God. The winner is the one that finishes first, that crosses the finish line. It doesn't matter how great a start you get out of the starting blocks. It's really the one that finishes first that wins the race. And so we all remember the story between the, the rabbit and the turtle and how that it seemed like there would not be a competition. But, you know, the fable has it that because the, table, the, the turtle just steadily continued he won the race, thank God. And so it just it shows that, you know, it's not always what the odd makers are saying who is going to win the race, thank God. The one that is supposed to win doesn't always win. That's why they run the race. That's why they have the competition because it doesn't matter who's supposed to win. It's who wins that really matters. And so life has many laps to it. 
You know, there is the lap of childhood. There is the, the lap that we have when we're a young person. There's the lap of adult, young adult and young married and middle age. And finally, the golden, wonderful years of golden age. You know, it's a wonderful thing. And so it's a beautiful thing. God has, has all these stages of life. But if you will look, uh, you will see that none of these, none of us know that we are going to be able to uh, finish all of these stages of life. We don't have any guarantee that we will get to enjoy every stage of life. Possibly you will, but possibly you will not. Thank God. But the thing that matters is how you cross the finish line. When the race is finished, that's what really matters. And so the only lap that matters is the lap. The last lap, thank God. It's the lap that you're running today because today is the day of salvation. Today is what really matters because we all have some laps in the past that we are not proud of, that we're thankful that uh, it's under the blood, thank God, and we may uh, be... Uh, have fallen, thank God, we may have gotten tripped up along the way, we may, have, some of you have been abused, some of you have been cheated on, some of you have had your heart broken, thank God, some of you have had promises broken, but in spite of all of that, thank God, today you have the opportunity to still finish well, praise God, but the truth is you're still in the race and there's still a possibility that you can finish and be a winner, thank God, the author of your faith still has a, a way for you to cross the finish line with victory. And that is his purpose. There's not anyone here tonight that God doesn't have victory planned for you and your life. Because it is not how you start the race, but it's how you finish the race. Thank God. We all know the ultimate finish line is death. And we preached about that uh, this morning and about being prepared and all of that. But, um, uh, but the thing is, is that... Uh, what matters, thank God, is how that you cross that finish line. Thank God. It's easy to, to get uh, life uh, happening in our lives and we get short-range goals and we begin to live for just to get through the day. Some people are living just to get through the day. Some people are living just to get through the week. Some people are living to just get through with school. Some people are living to just get married. Some people are living to just grow up. Thank God. Some people are living to just retire. But the truth of the matter is, is that uh, what then? Because the truth, you will then be uh, near, uh, near, near, only the thing that's truth about that is you'll be nearer to the end of your race. Thank God, all that will matter at the end of the race is what was done, thank God, that has eternal value because we're living and God is wanting us to store up treasures in heaven. He's wanting us to get some eternal uh, investments made and it's great to have some natural investments and nothing wrong with investing in this world but I'm telling you it's going to all pass away and God, the truth is, is we all are going to get to the finish line one day and there uh, you know it will know uh, there will be no guarantees that we will uh, get uh, to ever run another lap because we just don't have any promises of tomorrow often um, you know we uh, think about uh, the graveyard, and it provides the uh, realization that uh, there are all sizes of tomb graveyards out there, graves out there. Often on the tombstone, there is the epitaph that tries to sum up the person's life. And some may say, you know, he was a loving husband. Some may say he was my dad. Some may say he was he loved to fish. He loved to hunt. I know my dad's tombstone. It says he was a a, a man. Here lies a man of faith. That's what it was said about my dad. That was kind of how we summed up his life. Thank God. But I wonder what will be on your epitaph because normally you don't get to write what they put on your tombstone. It's your loved ones that will write uh, maybe a little message of what uh, you were all about. Life in the end will be uh, measured by the significant things that we do. It's not going to be measured by how much money you left. It's not going to be measured by the kind of job that you did. It's not going to be measured by the trophies that you had. But the significance will be defined by the, the character or the lack of character that you had. The Bible makes it clear that someday, thank God, we will all give an account for the way that we lived in this life. And there are a lot of insignificant things that people live their lives for. And the Bible describes those things that have no eternal value. And they are like wood and hay and stubble. And they're going to be consumed by the bonfire of insignificance. But 
It also talks about some things that have eternal significance. The Bible and that uh, we can have something that really went with us and met us over in eternity. Thank God. And those things in the Bible are called the goal that has been tried by fire. Somewhere you need to make some eternal investments. It's not enough to have some natural investments because all of us um, are going to spend eternity somewhere like we ministered this morning. But in the Bible, there's a story of a man that was um, a fisherman. Thank God. He could have been a pipe fitter. He could have been a truck driver. He could have been a plant worker. Thank God. Or she could have been a secretary or she could have been a housewife or whatever. Thank God. But the day that he met Jesus, thank God, he felt like he was a loser because he had just finished a night of fishing and he had caught nothing. He felt uh, tired. He was hungry. He was humiliated by the performance that he had had that night. We're not catching any fish. And while he was cleaning his nets, Jesus shows up, thank God, and, uh, with a crowd of people with him. And it's clear that uh, this meeting was not uh, an accident as we when you finish the story you'll know that it wasn't an accident that Jesus showed up that day it wasn't an accident that Peter was sitting there in his boat dejected and feeling like a loser praise God because uh, the whole thing uh, there was a purpose and it's my plan that this night thank God before you leave this building that some of you might have just think that you accidentally showed up you just came because it just was a neat thing to do or it was the thing you were supposed to do and I am praying that before you leave here thank God that you will understand that it wasn't an accident Jesus had a divine purpose for you to be here tonight I believe that Jesus is passing by here today and he's looking for a heart that will let him come thank God and change their life God is in the changing business he's in the business of helping you to be able to finish well thank God what looks like was defeat he's able to turn it into a victory. And so Jesus asked Peter, thank God, if he could just use his boat as a platform so that he could preach to the crowd that had gathered that day. And Peter said, no problem. Thank God, when uh, the sermon was over, Jesus uh, offered a challenge to Peter. And little did Peter know that the way that he responded to that challenge would forever change his life. And it's why that so many times when you come to church and the presence of God moves on you and it, it touches you to do something, you don't realize that, that if you respond to that little tug, thank God, it could change your life. That one moment of just saying, well, okay, I'll step out now. Okay, I'll go down to the altar. Okay, I'll raise my hands. Thank God. You just never know what's going to happen. It can change your life. God is just waiting for somebody to respond to him. Thank God. He could have said no. Peter could have said, hey, no way. He, he did try to let the Lord know that it would be a futile thing to do, you know, because we had fished all night, we'd taken nothing, and so, you know, um, we'll do, but it really won't matter. It really won't help. Thank God. But every one of us needs to have that place uh, that Peter came to, and that was a nevertheless. But nevertheless, Lord, if that's what you want me to do. Thank God. He had told Jesus how hard it had been. Thank God. And what he really was saying is that it, it's no use to try again. Thank God. And sometimes, you know, that's what happens to us. When the Lord challenges us to do something, we just say, well, Lord, you know, I tried that. It, it didn't work. It didn't help. Thank God. But Somebody else is telling you to try it. Maybe you tried it because uh, it was the right thing to do. Maybe you tried it because someone suggested maybe you ought to do this. But tonight, I'm telling you, if that still small voice is saying, go ahead and take the challenge. Go ahead and step out. It look, thank God. We let, thank God, because, you know, we just don't realize how important it is in a moment that God can do so much. Thank God. And so what we need is just a nevertheless moment like Peter had. That was the decision that forever changed his life. It was the decision to step out uh, by faith and uh, what, let God direct his life and let God take control and, and begin to change his course. Thank God. What God wants you to do is to just take that step of faith. And when you step out, God is going to do his part. And that's what uh, obeying God in uh, so many times helps us to find the very thing that we thought we were never going to have, but God is able to provide. It means trusting God to supply. Thank God to provide 
in a situation where that it looks like the odds are absolutely against anything being able to done be done. It may be the healing in your body. It may be the meeting of a financial need. It doesn't really matter to God. The problem is not the problem. Thank God the problem is you just turning your problem over to him. Thank God. Because faith... Thank God. Faith looks forward. Faith hopes. Faith endures. Sometimes it's a process of you just having to endure hardness for a little while. Faith is in uh, direct proportions to God's, uh, our, our image of God. Ever how much faith you have in God is how big your God is. And so your faith is very important in accomplishing what God wants you to accomplish. So often when the circumstances of life engulf us because of, um, you know, just... Uh, problems that are bigger than we are. Thank God we forget that God is still in control. We forget that God still can make a way. Thank God he is going to use all of this working for the purpose for his good in your life. And so if we will just keep walking by faith, God will come through. God always comes through. It doesn't always happen as fast as you want him to, but I'm telling you, God will always come through. Thank God. And so back to our story with Peter. Thank God he must have decided. Thank God he had nothing to lose. Thank God he had agreed and, and pedaled out away from the shore. Thank God. And, and let his nets down. And it was uh, at that instant, thank God, that success came his way. And God blessed him beyond anything he could have imagined. But it was also at that point that Peter realized that, hey, this is more than a man that's in this boat with me. Thank God, this is not an ordinary man, but this has to be God manifest in the flesh. Thank God, he was... Uh, at that moment, thank God, he realized, hey, I'm a sinful man. God, you don't understand. You're hanging out with the wrong crowd. You don't realize what kind of guy you just stepped into the presence of. Thank God. But Peter, you don't realize that this was all planned. Thank God. That's the reason I came today because I saw your condition. Thank God. I wanted to take a loser and I wanted to make a winner out of him. You know, sometimes it looks like that God takes the most... Uh, hopeless situation and he brings that in and he restores it just to let you know that hey there ain't nothing too hard for me I can take care of any problem thank God it was at that point thank God that Peter realized that something was going on beyond his control thank God and so it was that what Peter didn't realize is that that was the reason that Jesus was there thank God he wanted to take him and make something meaningful out of his life and what he uh, wanted uh, us to realize tonight is that God is still able to take us at our worst and make something good out of us. And God, Jesus came, uh, said, just come follow me. I'll make you a fisher of men. God allows you to uh, be born because he had a purpose for you coming into this world. And he wanted to get you out of uh, the rat race of this world, seeking things to satisfy that can never satisfy. And even if you ultimately obtain the success of this world, it's still will not satisfy. Thank God. He wants you to, to get out of that rat race. And even if you understand that, uh, but I got a, a good news for you tonight. I've come to tell you something good about our God. And that is, as you come to the crossroad that you're at tonight, uh, you have a choice. Thank God. You can take a very different direction. You can turn your life in a new way. Thank God. Jesus has come by tonight to let you know that he wants you to, uh, he wanted to speak peace to the storm. Thank God. He wanted to set your affections on things above and not on things below. He wants to give you, he wants to give you abundant life. Thank God. He wants to give you a life that's not, uh, that can be a winner and not a loser. Thank God. And that is the uh, reason that he came that he wanted to bring you to the prince of peace thank god peace that men give will pass away but when the prince of peace comes thank god he gives you peace that passeth understanding when jesus shows up thank god you know when jesus shows up the first thing we realize is the searchlight comes on and any imperfections any sin in our lives it comes to light praise god but all you have to do is what peter said to do thank god then peter said unto them repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of jesus christ for the remissions of sins and you shall receive the gift of the holy ghost and so tonight jesus has showed up Thank God, he just wants you to know, thank God, that there is nothing too hard for him. If you will just launch out into the deep, thank God, God is going to bring blessings your way. God has got help for you. Thank God, all he wants you to do is understand that if you'll let the old man die, 
There's a new man that he wants to resurrect. Praise God. And so all of us stand here today as we worship the Lord with the appreciation because of the day that we repented of our sins and we died, thank God, and we were buried in that lovely name of Jesus and water baptism for the remission of sins. And then we received the wonderful gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. From that time, thank God, a new day began. Something wonderful began to happen in our lives because... Uh, a new creature was created. Old things passed away. Everything became new. We have been changed tonight. We're a blessed people. Sometimes we forget how good God has been to us, where he brought us from, how much he helped us. And anyone that's here tonight that this is all new to you, I want you to know that but by the grace of God, thank God we were in the gutters, but by the grace of God we were on drugs, but by the grace of God I'd be somewhere else tonight. But God found me. Hey, God, God found me. God drew me. God changed me. It was all by the grace and the mercy of God. I haven't made myself good, but God has come into my heart, and he has made me good, and he's made me holy. While we're standing tonight, there's a miracle waiting for someone tonight, even, thank God, by just taking a step of faith. I don't know what miracle you need tonight. I was hoping there would be uh, more people here that didn't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, but... It doesn't matter. Thank God. God's still in the miracle working business. And so I don't know what miracle you need tonight. I don't know what it is that you would really call a miracle tonight. But God really does know what you need tonight. Thank God. And if you will step out, thank God, you're going to be touched. God is going to help. Thank God. He's going to take that dry well and he's going to let it begin to become a well of living water. He's going to let joy begin to spring up again where that sadness is today. Thank God, you may be at a low point in your life. So was Peter. Thank God, couldn't have got any lower for a fisherman, thank God, than what Peter was. But look what God did for him. Look where just an encounter with God and how it changed his life. If someone could have an encounter here tonight with the Lord, it is no telling what would happen in the days to come in your life. Thank God, the step of faith is never easy, but it's always rewarding. Somewhere tonight, someone needs to just take a step of faith. Whatever it is that you're up against, whatever it is that uh, seems like is getting bigger than you are, I'm telling you, it's not bigger than your God. And so tonight, thank God, can um, be a night where that you can cross the finish line and be a winner. Thank God. You can have a touch from God that only God can give you. And it's so beautiful when you step into that place and God touches you. Thank God. Not just a friend touches you, but God touches you. Thank God. While we sing tonight, I wonder if there's anyone here tonight. Thank God. God can finish what he's begun in your life. Thank God. Some of you are an un 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 unfinished work. Some of you are not everything that God wants you to be. But I'm telling you, if you'll just come on, thank God God still wants to finish what he started in your life. God's not through with any of us. Every one of us can find greater things in God. God's got greater things that he wants to do. I give you praise tonight, Lord. I give you praise tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah.